Hello from the Tar Pits. Today, in honor of International Raccoon Appreciation Day, we'll be talking about this fossil raccoon skull recently found at Project 23. This is a really special find for us. While we found thousands of dire wolves and saber-toothed cats, this is only the second raccoon ever found here at the Tar Pits. So stay tuned, we'll be posting throughout the day. Next up is why we think raccoons are so rarely found here. Thanks! The first raccoon fossil ever found at the Tar Pits was an ulna, or a lower arm bone, from Pit 91 in 1973. Pit 91, a fossil deposit found in 1915, was reopened in 1969 to focus on collecting small fossils. This renewed effort doubled the number of species found at the tar pits by finding fossils from insects, mollusks, plants, and small mammals that hadn't been documented here before. Until now, this ulna has been the only raccoon found at the tar pits. Next, we'll hear about the discovery of the second raccoon found at the pits. Hello! Raccoons are nocturnal animals, which means they like to be more active at night. We have several different nocturnal animals that we find here at the La Brea tar pits. Things like owls, badgers, and bats but they tend to be relatively rare in our collections. Things like the raccoon from Box 13 is even more rare. Why is something that's still the subject of ongoing scientific inquiry? But it may be the fact that asphalt is less sticky during the cooler temperatures of night. Or maybe raccoons' famous problem-solving skills makes them less likely to get entrapped in the first place. I look at lots of fossils and fossil fragments in the sorting that I do out here at Project 23. I probably see hundreds of fossil bones every day. So when an upper jaw and tooth came through, I thought, oh, that's really interesting. I, I, I identify it as a maxilla, but the scale is really unusual. It's, it's smaller than a coyote and it's larger than a weasel. So I took it into the museum to compare it to the bones that we've already identified, and it turned out to be a raccoon. When the first raccoon piece was found, we were really hoping there might be more. Beside me here in the lab, we have the backlog of fossils that have been excavated but haven't been prepared yet. Outside in excavations, it can be really tricky to get an exact ID because a lot of those features are still covered up. So potentially more of the raccoon could be in here. In the middle here, I've got what I thought was the back half of a coyote skull, but as I was working on it, I started having doubts. I went to our comparative collection to help figure out whose skull it was, and it matched a raccoon. Next, we'll head outside to excavations to see where it came from. Welcome to Project 23. This is Box 13. This is about 32,000 years old. Recently, that raccoon skull that has been fully prepared and pieced back together in the lab, that was found in this deposit in multiple grids and levels in different areas. So it was fragmented, broken apart, and separated through time probably thousands of years ago. But the lab did a wonderful job preparing all that material, and now we have a great new skull of a raccoon in our collection. Here's the right front half of the raccoon skull right out of box 13. This is a time lapse of part of the preparation to reveal the fossil from the matrix. So matrix is material around a fossil. In our case here at the pits, it's based in asphalt. So we dip tools like foam tip applicators and paint brushes in n-propyl bromide, which is a chemical that liquefies and softens asphalt. You can see the tools get stained black really quickly. So once the matrix is soft, we can use toothpicks or paintbrushes to sort of gently nudge away the more stubborn patches to reveal the bone, and in this case, three of the raccoon's teeth. So thanks for watching, and stick around to see how we repaired this skull and strengthened it. Here are two of the raccoon skull pieces ready for glue. I'm testing the fit to make sure everything lines up correctly. Once it all looks good, I can apply Paraloid B72, the conservation glue, to one side. I'm using a thick version to help it set quickly, and a thinner version to make sure there's glue all across the brake. Although this may look fast, it's a very slow process. This video has been sped up considerably. Once it's put together, it goes to rest and set completely in a sandbox.